I'm trying to remember what our questions were. Let me see if I can pull them up. Just, just mad lib it. Let's see, let's see where this thing goes. <laughs> um, okay, so tell me like, while you've been in quarantine, what have you been, what have you been doing? Yeah, so quarantine's been pretty interesting for for me. So I'm a I'm a pastor at a church here in, in Corsicana, lovingly known as the Can. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know where Corsicana is, if you watched the Netflix thing Cheer, that's Corsicana. <laughs> and so Good that's the claim to fame. Yeah. But between the church kind of being closed down more or less, and then Cheryl being a nurse, we just had an interesting dynamic of her having to go to work and so we live in Corsicana, but she works in Dallas and we have an apartment for her in Dallas so that when she gets off at 7.30 in the morning, she doesn't have to drive an hour and 20 minutes down here. And so it was this big question of, is she gonna get home because of what's going on? Does she need to stay? What are we gonna do? So that was, at least the beginning of it was kind of tense for us, but you know, we the Lord was very faithful. Cheryl has worked on the COVID floor just one day and through all this. And, and even when she was there, she didn't have actual patients. She was essentially an advocate for the nurses that were taking care of the patients. And so she had to sign them in, taking everything on and putting everything on and taking everything off. And so these nurses would go into the rooms, figure out what they would need, knock on the door. And Cheryl would go open and say, I need this, 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 and this. She'd go get it come back, knock, and they would like slide it through the door so that these people, these nurses don't have to go in with all their garb, come out, take it off, go back, put on new stuff. So it just kind of made the whole system easier. Mm -hmm. So that was just, that was just one day for Cheryl, which praise the Lord for that. Uh, but as far as me and the church goes, I uh, did a whole lot of Bible studies for the first, I think, seven weeks that uh, Stephen Bell and I did a daily Bible study, wow. which is a lot of Bible study. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was good, but it was a lot. Um, Were they all like video? So, yeah, we, we did it just like this uh, through, well, we started doing it in person, but then we eventually did it through Zoom and just streamed it straight to Facebook Live. Uh, and so we did that the church was closed down as every church in the country and the world was uh, but we still did live production uh, instead of recording it beforehand so uh, I learned how to preach to an empty room which is weird uh, but uh, that's okay and since then on May 17th we opened back up and so we've slowly been letting people back in. And then along with that, in the middle of quarantine, as Methodist pastors are known and likely to do, uh, we, get, we get called and told that we're moving and we're going to new churches. And so in the middle of all of this, I got a phone call and said, hey, we're gonna move you to Community of Hope in Mansfield. And so uh, starting in on July 1st, I'll go and I'll be the head pastor at Community of Hope. So right now in the middle of everything else going on cheryl and i are packing up our house and getting ready to move we're moving next thursday which would be crazy that is actually really nuts <laughs> is yeah and so it's it's gonna be pretty you know difficult interesting i don't know what the word is for it but you know, whatever the church is doing right now, the way that they're handling it and stepping into a new situation of, hey, you can't meet me yet because we're not meeting in person, but I'm your new pastor. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have some dynamics to work through for sure, mm -hmm. but it'll all be good stuff. What are like things that you're nervous about, excited about with this new jump to this? Cause like you're moving, yeah. to, you're like the head pastor. Right, which you're, is crazy. You're the senior pastor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, nerves are one, just like you said, this is a really new role for me. And, you know, my kind of my career path has been student minister at White's Chapel, 
I worked in the care and support department for a year, and then I've been the associate pastor here in Corsicana for three years now. And so I'm about to take on a whole new bout of responsibility, that, which will be really good. And it's something that I have been praying over for a long time and training for and kind of equipping myself with. But now it's kind of time to put my money where my mouth is, I think. Yeah. Which I think that'll be, it's an exciting thing, but there's definitely an intimidation factor to it. Yeah. And, you know, I'm 29 years old. Yeah. So that's, oh, I'm, I'm still really young. Yeah. <laughs> Which is just an added element in anything that I'm doing right now. Yeah of kind of gaining the the pastoral authority that I have and that I've been blessed with both by God and by our bishop who's the, who ordained me a year ago. And so I, I have what it takes, I can do what it takes, but there's definitely hurdles to jump to get to a place of respect, I think. And hopefully I'm wrong about that, but just figuring so. Yeah, being, uh, being I'm assuming are you like, younger than the people on your staff outside of one person i, I believe so okay. outside of your buddy yeah. or whatever <laughs> yeah yeah and so that's just an just an added element to it yeah hi <laughs> <laughs> like yeah <laughs> i don't know who that was <laughs> <laughs> Literally never seen that person before in my life. Awesome. But <laughs> they know who you were or something. Yeah. Or they knew that I was on a Zoom call. <laughs> uh, but so that's that's definitely a a place of anxiety and a place of nervousness and really just with the with everything going on in the world. And it's certainly not an ideal time to step into a new role. Mm -hmm. But but that's okay. And, yeah. You know, but I, I truly believe that the Lord calls us where he wants us to go and he makes our, pay, our path straight to get there. And so even in the middle of a pandemic, it's okay. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. and so. Is there anything you're and, excited about? I'm excited about all of it. And, no. You know, there's, there's just this, excitement about starting something new and going somewhere new it, and that, like I said it kind of seems like this is a church that is kind of scrapping and and searching for their identity as a church yeah and and so I'm really excited to get to step in and to help them figure that out mm. you know my some of my greatest passions are come with discipling people that as you know and it was a big part of what I did in WC students was my my cell group and some of those boys I had from Matt Landers and Brooks Ragsdale and just you know shepherding and helping and I think that's what the church needs right now and yeah. so I'm really excited to get to step into that role and it's a I, I have no doubt the pastors before me have been really great and have have done everything they can and everything they should have done but i'm excited to come in and love these people in a new way it's exciting stuff you know it's it's definitely hard to leave uh, you know my my first two years serving here cheryl and i lived in dallas and so i was driving back and forth every day which was a pain in the tail but it is what it is and i do love to drive so that was okay for me uh, but <laughs> You know, we moved down here and our prayer was for community and this, it quickly became home for us. That's cool. And, and so we have we have our people here, we got Jenna here, and it's so it's not easy to leave. We got Steven and Meredith and but and, you know, for everything there is a season. Yeah. Yeah. And this and and so what is something that the Lord has like taught you? Uh, during this transition, during quarantine, just something he's been teaching you lately. Um, yeah, uh, I am a textbook extrovert. Uh, I uh, do not like being alone. I'm not good <laughs> at being alone. It's the worst. I want to be around people all the time. Uh, but kind of the way that uh, 
this quarant- or one of the things this quarantine's been teaching me is one that one relationships continue even if you don't get to be around people. I mean, I think you and I spent the first 40 minutes of this conversation just catching up because yeah. that's what a relationship is. Yeah. But there's there's that element and then even three nights a week Cheryl's at work and so three nights a week it's literally just me and her house and so I'm the biggest thing the Lord has been teaching me is how do I be content with what I have yeah and and, and even to rely on him in that because i I think this I think COVID has been really hard then, but I think not only for me I think in kind of our world it is sparking a revival for people and and specifically for me I mean I've got I've grown closer to the Lord through this because we've had a lot of time together which is a great thing yeah it's causing all of us to slow down right and And I'm not used to that I like to go and do yeah your energy level is (laughs) none other (laughs) yes and it's still going, Lloyd. <laughs> this is my last question. Favorite memory of your time in WC students? That's a, you You know, you sent me this question. I've spent a lot of time thinking about it. If I you, think you know what one of my answers is gonna be, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a few because there's a lot of things that I really loved. Good. Uh, one, leading my cell group it was yeah. just a wonderful, wonderful, Thing for me in time and ministry. It's, good old it's, Zaggy was good old Zaggy. I mean, these are these are now college graduates, which is nuts. You are right. <laughs> uh, but I mean, I've kept in touch with most of them up mm-hmm. until now, and I mean, I got dinner with a handful of them over Christmas break this year. Then. And so kind of those relationships that were formed were amazing. Mm-hmm. I believe really, really highly in in small group ministries and, and just the, the relationships that you can make through them. Yeah. And that, that that passion for me sparks from that group. Mm-hmm. So that was that was definitely a favorite. And another favorite thing, I got to work with one of my best friends. And, <laughs> you know. I'm sure JT and I drove y'all absolutely nuts. Good. But, <laughs> but it was really fun for us. <laughs> and so that was that was something I really, really loved. Yeah. Was, you know, not only was I going through school, but you know, JT and I worked together, went to class together. And he he made all of that so much easier. And so Working with one of my best friends was definitely one of my favorite things. And, and then here's the big one. This one involves you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm interested. What's your guess? Uh, will it be hammocking or the office? No, but that is, a, that is a great guess. That is a great guess. But So there was one time we were going on fall retreat to Pine Cove. Okay. And oh. the bus company yeah. was. De- <laughs> yes. Okay. okay. Yes, I know. I know where this is going. <laughs> so the bus company that we had was all of their stuff was rented out. It's Chuck's, right? Chuck's Travel. Uh-huh. And so we couldn't use our normal buses, and we got these the low little buses that it's like it's a like, fifteen passenger van essentially. Moving motor coaches or something like that. Yeah. yeah. That I mean, it's we we have one here in Corsicana. We we have that that exact bus, and so in it there's all the seats, and then in the very back there's a small storage section, and we have everything packed into this small storage section. So there's a wall into the seats, and then the actual back of the bus. Somebody, I'm not, I don't know who it was, but did not close the back very well. And so as we are driving down a highway, it's pitch dark because it's, I don't know what time it was, like nine o'clock or something. Yep. That, that the door opens up and stuff proceeds to fall out onto the highway. And there was one sleeping bag in particular that got lost. 
And so, again, it is pitch dark. Floyd, you were wearing all black. I'll never forget that. Black sweatpants and a black sweatshirt. It was not wise. And, <laughs> and you and I, one, went walked off of the highway over to a gas station to buy flashlights, came back and walked down the highway and we're just shining these flashlights in drivers' eyes so that they knew that we were there trying to find the sleeping bag. <laughs> Bye, Adrian. Which we never found. No. <laughs> I think that poor little girl was, was so sad. Yeah, we went and bought her like an identical sleeping bag at Academy or Walmart or wherever it was. Because was this isn't my sleeping bag. <laughs> What do you want us to do here? <laughs> oh my god. Hi Jenna. Um, yeah, you can still come in. You wanna say hi? Yeah. <laughs> you're gonna be in our recording now, Jenna. Yeah, we're we're recording, so you're in it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that was definitely that's one of my favorite ministry moments that I've ever had walking yeah. down that but you know wc students was it was really really impactful for me and you know i actually told this story in my sermon this week that i came to white's chapel came back to white's chapel having grown up there but came back as a quote-unquote pastoral intern and then two weeks into it to get told hey you're moving to the youth group yeah. and i was so mad <laughs> because I had been offered a leadership spot at Pine Cove and all that kind of stuff. And so if I wanted to do youth ministry, I was going to be a camp. Yeah. But, you know, that summer was transformed into loving the ministry there. A ministry that had raised me as a, as a high school student as well. And then came back and, and was on staff for, I think, three years. And, and you know, I learned... And I'm on passion for ministry in it. I learned the things that I really love and the things that are definitely difficult for me. I'm still not good at working in an office. And, and I learned that firsthand at Lights Chapel Students. <laughs> That's why you're but, Well, the internet didn't work at the church, okay? <laughs> it was slow. But, you know, I learned my my love for small group ministry and discipling and I love my I learned my love for pastoral care through WC students and okay. and it it shaped me into the the pastor that I am and the pastor that I want to be. Mm -hmm. So I have a I have nothing but good things and fond memories of WC students because without it I'm I don't think I'm where I am today or who I am today. <laughs>